Hello? Hey, Lana. Hi, guys. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you all. Hello. Lena, this... Adam, we can't hear you. Lena, this is my friend. Um, I don't know if you've heard of him before. His name is um, Andrew Tate. Never heard of him. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you? <laughs> I'm pretty good. Lena, That's good. Yeah, good. Lena, I can see you. Know, you you have a black microphone in your face. It's very nice. Does it remind you of anything? Uh, Andrew? We have to be very careful with this conversation, and I'm going to explain why. <laughs> Let's start by setting some ground rules, because it's very nice to meet these two people, and I've never met them in real life, and I believe in being respectful to everybody. That's who I am as a person. I believe in treating everybody with respect, and even if we're going to have an interesting Wait, guys, conversation, gonna we're going to have disagreements in this debate, perhaps, that might evolve. I'm not going to sit here and insult anybody. That's not who I am. So I know what you're trying to make me do, Aiden. You're trying to make me say something which could be deemed offensive, and that's not what I'm going to do. I'm not sure. Because yeah. We're all individuals, and we can all make our own choices. We have a lot more in common than we have uh, separating us because, believe it or not, the Matrix has been out to get me, too. So has it? Uh, Tell me how. Bro, they've been trying to cancel me for years. All kinds of made-up sexual assault bullshit and everything under the sun. The same exact playbook that they've been using to try to take you out the game. So you may disagree with uh, some of our sexual proclivities, but believe me, me and Andrew Tate, we're, we're victims of the same struggle. Shout out to well, Tupac. <laughs> and I think once you get to a certain level of fame and influence, every single man's going to be hit with this. I mean, the reason Aiden hasn't been hit by it is because it's just so unbelievable. Everyone knows I Aiden's have, full of shit. I literally have, though, bro. I got canceled like 30 I, times, bro. 30 well, times for, for What, for hanging around with chicks? They said you, like, had sex with a girl or whatever? You got sexual no, assault? No, nothing like that. Thank God that's I have exactly that. What I mean. Yeah, because everyone knows you're not getting laid, so that's fine. But it, when you're an actually high-status male, Adam, it's what the pretty fuck? close. What are you that happens. Whatever, bro. Whatever, bro. Cool. And so I can't... True. Say again, sorry. I know trans girls, girls. I know girls have fucked Aiden, so I, I don't think that's totally true. What? How do you know this? I know all about you, Aiden. Tell me all about Aiden. Bro, hey, what is this? Bro? Out, I know like 10 trans chicks that Aiden fucked. All right, see, now if you're going to believe that shit, it's not true at all. Come on, bro, you know <laughs> it's not true. Aiden? Andrew, I swear to God, I've never fucked a trans girl before. All my life, I never let me will. Tell you, let, me let me tell you all a story. Mm. When I was about 25, I was living in Thailand. And I must be the only man who lived in Thailand for because I was fighting. So I lived there for two years. And I lived there, and I must be the only man who lived in Thailand. I've never paid for sex, never slept with a prostitute, none of the, none of the weird shit. So I'm living in Thailand. And I had this Russian girlfriend, and then she went back to Russia, and I was a bit lonely, and I thought, okay, I'm going to try and get myself a new girlfriend. And by coincidence, the same day, I met this beautiful Swedish girl, and she was backpacking. And I met her, and I went up to her and started saying hello, blah, blah, blah. We agreed to go for a drink that night. After talking to her, I was walking home, and as I was walking, this transsexual, who must have been about 55, 56, had a couple teeth missing, some man, clearly a man, I don't want to, you know, misgender, clearly a man, but was a transsexual, was walking across the road from me, and he slash she pointed at me and said, hey, I can tell by how you walk, you have a big dick. What the fuck? And I looked back at this transsexual and thought, well, I'll take the compliment, and I said, yes, that's true, thank you very much, and I continued on my walk. That was the end of the story. Until 9 o'clock rolls around, I get on my motorcycle, I go down to this bar to meet this Swedish girl. I'm sitting there, I get drinks on the table, she turns up 20 minutes late, and I'm sitting there with the Swedish girl, and after an hour and a half of drinking and enjoying each other's company, I'd already kissed her twice, I was due to go back to her house, because my house was a dump and she had more money than me, and we're going to go and stay at hers. When the transsexual walks in the bar, and in front of the entire bar, she walks in and points to me across the bar and goes, Dick! And the entire bar what? stops. What, what is and looks person? big dick. She said big dick. And the entire bar stops and looks at her, the old transsexual with missing teeth, and then looks at me. And I tried to explain for the following 10 minutes to this Swedish girl that I've never slept with this person. I don't know why she says I have a big dick and I've never been there. I don't know. And I just saw her on the street and she didn't believe me. She went to the toilet and never returned. That's a story from when my lonely night in Thailand. That's true, and it completely happened. You, you never give a lady boy a shot? I've never given a lady boy a shot, no. Am I missing out, Adam? I haven't done it either, but I went out to Thailand when I was like uh, 19, 20, and the lady boys are out there. And some of them, 
even back then, this was like 20 years ago, they were doing a pretty impressive ruse. Like they, they looked like more of a woman than a lot of women that I know. So you know, shout out to them. I've seen a lady Jack, get the fuck out of the dude. It was a really interesting sight. Mm -hmm. He was saying some shit to her right in his mouth and she literally fought like a man and beat the shit out of him. And it was pretty interesting to see. Heels on and everything. All right, can I just address the elephant in the room? Why is nobody talking? Yo, so Lena, you just, you just finished, I heard the video's going crazy on Pornhub, you guys crashed it. Um, it's on my OnlyFans. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So, Adam, if you don't, I'm oh, sorry, uh, Andrew, what happened was, this, I, this, I don't know, yeah, I don't know if you heard, uh, Andrew, they, they did a video, um, basically, Adam and them, they're married, they're, you know, they're, they've been married for a while, they have a beautiful family, um, and uh, basically one day, uh, they decided to, uh, basically, Adam said, uh, hey, hun, you can go ahead and get a BBC by this guy. So they had a big black uh, cock insert her puss. And uh, it's not in the video. And um, that's True. pretty much what happened. And uh, uh, thoughts, Andrew? Well, I think I mentioned this on one of my previous podcasts. I said that I wouldn't personally do that. Bro. But. It's not my personal preference, but I want to make something clear. I, 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 I'm really careful about what I say to people. I don't want to insult anybody. That's not who I am as a person. If that's their personal decision to make, then they can make their own personal decisions and do as they please. I'm not here to sit and say they shouldn't do it. All I can say is that I wouldn't personally do that. That's not something I would allow my woman to do. But perhaps I'm missing something. Maybe I. Maybe you can tell me why I'm. I'm wrong. I'm not sure. Would you guys let your wife do that? Yeah, the yes thing that no. he's the most important piece of context that is missing is the fact that we already had been doing porn for, I mean, maybe five, six years, or really since the very beginning of our relationship. And you know, she is 32. She is a mother. Realistically, she's not going to be doing this forever. But we decided that it made a lot of sense for her to, you know seize upon the moment, the fact that she's still got her youth about her, and slurp up a black cock for the fucking paper, man. He That's liked just, it. He uh, liked watching the video. Yeah, I was kind of turned on by it. I'm not gonna lie. So my, oh. my question would my question would Dude. be so, sorry, one more time. Lena, right? Correct? Lena? Le Lena, yes. Lena. Do you think that you have an emotional attachment to this man now or like you literally wouldn't care what happened to him? Let's say heaven forbid something I don't know, he he got locked up and went to jail or something like would you care or would you literally have zero interest in him as an individual feel for him as i would feel for like almost anyone i'd ever met who went to jail but like no offense jason i see you as like a male sex doll like you were so just no no emotional <laughs> attachment to him whatsoever no this is where i have my emotional attachment okay well then if you if you're if you're capable of keeping that divide then i'm not here to insult you and the reason i don't insult oh, people nerfed. i want to make this nerfed, very clear yeah, because nerfed. I'm kidding. Maybe it's just the life I've lived. But I think the internet has fucked the world up. And I think one of the ways it's messed the world up is everybody's constantly running their mouths. And the world I'm from and the life I've lived, if you insult somebody, it's it's you have to be prepared to defend that opinion. And I know people who have run their mouths and end up gotten, getting shot for it. And I, I don't like to sit around and insult people unless I have a genuine beef with them. So I'm not here to judge you or your life. I can just say that it's not something I would personally do. Well, if you feel like you have no emotional attachment to the guy, I think that's a good thing. I think your exactly. heart should be in one place. Andrew, and that's you, all I'm gonna say. objectively, you could definitely beat the shit out of me. But one time I was hanging out with the UFC fighter, Donald Cowboy Cerrone, and he pulled up some old Andrew Tate uh, kickboxing matches and was showing me them and did a pretty good job of making the point of this guy can't fight which I am not uh, in a position to judge, but I have had that experience where a former UFC champion has basically told me about what a bitch you are, which I don't agree with. I'm a fan of the top G. I like everything that you're doing out here, but I, I, I think you and Donald Cerrone need to settle this in the, in the square circle. Well, that's the thing about Yo. fighting, right? The thing about fighting as a sport is that everybody who watches it goes, this guy can't fight, or everyone at home who's never even fought says this guy can't fight, or the other fighters say this guy can't fight, which is why as a fighter you constantly feel like you have something to prove. Even if you win 100 fights in a row, there's always going to be someone out there who says you can't fight. I'd like to think that my record stands for itself. I've had 88 fights. I've had a bunch of fights, a four-time world champion. I fought a bunch of rules, including MMA. And I did my very best and I won a bunch of titles and made some money and beat a bunch of people. And of course, there's always gonna be someone who watches me and says I can fight. There's a bunch of videos that say I can and there's the odd idiot who says I can't. But I'm very happy with who I am and my career and what I've achieved and I'm very confident in my abilities. So it is what it is. And as for Cerrone, I've heard of him. Didn't he get, didn't McGregor finish him pretty quick? 
Wait, chat. Is so. he a good I'm fighter? Yes or no? Sure. But either way, we, we need to settle that score at some point. I just want to throw that out there. But no, so I don't know if we do. I don't know if I need, you know, because and this is something I want to make clear as well. I don't know if I need beef with people on the internet. I see a lot of this. I see a lot of people Chat. constantly beefing each other and all these arguments, etc. I don't need any of those things. I'm fighting against uh, the judicial system. I'm fighting against the most powerful people in the world trying to silence me. I have enough battles in my life. I don't have time to be fucking tweet beefing with some dude. If he has a problem with me, he can come to my house. He knows where I am. Everyone knows where I am. Until then, I have no problems with anybody. So, as for Sarone, if he thinks I can't fight, then if he wants to tell me to my face and kick my ass, he's welcome to try. And I <laughs> strongly believe he would regret that decision. And that's as far as I need to take it. Right. So, your brother, Tristan, was in my DMs, like, really sincerely trying to convince me that I had made a very grave error, a, a massive mistake as a result of having let my wife shoot with another man. Myself, personally, having been, you know, a couple weeks removed from the actual incident happening... I don't really feel like I made a mistake. It feels like some pretty regular porn WT shit. The chat, man. You know, I was a little bit jealous at first. It's kind of a weird feeling knowing that your your woman was in the arms of another man, even if it was uh, only for a few hours. But it's interesting. You don't seem like you have as much of a a real like moral issue with with Yo. the act itself. Well. I can give you my opinion on why I wouldn't ever do it, and I think the reason I wouldn't ever do it is because I believe that a man and a woman have a connection between them, and I think that connection is solidified by sexual exclusivity from the female's part, and I believe there's an energy cord between, and I think that once that's broken with another man, I do believe there's a degree of the connection which is damaged, and I think that when the relationship is good, perhaps you will not feel it, but when the relationship is bad or when arguments start to happen or you start to get on each other's nerves, you might notice a slight difference in behavior because I do also think that once the seal has been broken, I'll give you an example. The four minute mile was impossible to achieve, they believed, until one man ran the four minute mile and then a bunch of people ran the four minute mile. So once the seal's been broken, for example, let's say your wife's sleeping with another man, the idea of sleeping with another man is not as intimidating as it was one, once was. And perhaps the idea of sitting through an argument or sitting through a rough patch in a relationship and continue to try to work it out as opposed to just jumping on a new man, it might be less appealing than it once was previously. So I believe, personally, if my woman had already slept with another man, she's more likely to just give up on the relationship and sleep with another man again in a rough patch. You That's my personal view. Facts, chat. No. Say again? Why would I? I mean, I've never cheated on you, like even in the lowest terms of cheating, like responding to a DM from somebody or anything like I've never done any of that. Everything in our relationship has been out in the open. Um, you know, like all my messages with the person that I worked with, I was like, hey, just so Yo, you know, like, these are the cow. messages. Um, and like Adam has fucked a, a, about 200 women in front of me and he cheated on me. So like, you know, Adam, Adam, that's terrible. <laughs> We all got our issues. Hey, let me just tell you, about a half hour ago, I was laying on the floor in the adjacent office with a large Italian ass shaking on top of my face. She does this thing called Brazilian face sitting. Uh, he and almost it, died. It's going to appear on OnlyPlugTalk.com, which is our weekly podcast where we interview and then fuck a different girl every single week. And this girl was really cutting off my ability to breathe. <laughs> and when I would grab her ass and try to move her ass off of my face, she would grab my hands and hold on to them so that I wasn't able to escape. And Lena was was What's involved. The best thing to watch? She was giving me head during all this, and so I don't know. Like, do you feel like Dude. that affects our connection at all? Because I can, after having you shot with this guy, I can kind of understand why that shit doesn't matter to you. Because you and the other guy don't really matter to me at this point. I, I think it's well. My personal view is that it's very different for for a woman than it is for a man. And I think that, and I hope I'm wrong. If your relationship reaches a rough patch, perhaps the idea of being with another man will be more tempting than once previously was because the seal's already been broken. That's my personal view. I don't, with all due respect, care what you want to do with your own relationship. If it makes you happy, it should make you happy, and that's fine. And it's your decision to make. It's not my decision to make. I'm just telling you that I wouldn't do it. I can give you admiration for a degree to how well you've dealt with the pressure, I guess, or the hate or the backlash. I mean, you've handled it pretty well, which I guess is good. Not a lot of people can do that. So I have to give you some degree of respect for that. But um, I guess you expected all that before you made the decision to do it, right? Yeah, I did. And I mean, I've got I've caught a lot of flack because when you first commented on me on the uh, Tucker Carlson show, I left an Instagram comment that said, 
if he's the top G, I want to be the bottom G. <laughs> so I do want to extend an invite that if you were ever interested in doing your first ever double penetration scene, that me and Lena, I, I mean, I, I don't want to speak for you, but I feel like, yo, dude, would he be a suitable candidate? Would you, would, can I tap him I in? I don't know. No. He looks well, Oh, yeah, can, I, can I can I fill in real quick, Andrew? You know you're out, Aiden. We can't you. You're not in. You're not in this conversation anymore. <laughs> Fair enough. Go ahead, Andrew. Would you? Would you? Would you? Andrew, would you double penetrator, bro? Would, would you? Would you do that, Andrew? Go ahead. Finish the answer. Question. We're all locked together. Is is that chill? There's absolutely zero percent chance of that happening. <laughs> and it's not because Elena is particularly unattractive. It's because she's married to Adam, and I have no interest in degenerate, pointless sex, and I have no interest in making a spectacle of myself or even just involving myself in anything which I deem to be overall haram and pointless. That's just not something I'd be interested in. There's not a, there's not a single amount of money on the planet you could pay me to, to undertake. So Shout thank out to you. He's not doing no. double penetration because I, uh, I respect you all so much. Um, I'm with Andrew, by the way. I couldn't get paid any amount of money to fuck. No, no offense. Adam, respect you. Degenerate sex. I'm not with that. No amount of money. Yeah, you make dollars a month sitting on your ass so uh and that's from one sponsor i think right so uh <laughs> stop exposing him no i mean i read it i read it online <laughs> um but yeah i'm with andrew on that one uh andrew, so do you two think you're gonna stay together forever um i mean if adam she's on me again maybe not but i'm not a cheater anymore I left that in the past. That wasn't, that wasn't the old like, <laughs> day. Um, you get a divorce don't you think people are gonna attribute it to this event I, like I always think that we're going to be together forever. I mean, we didn't get married a long time ago. We just got married, but uh, it is unfortunate that if like in 10 years we break up because like, let's say he cheated on me, everyone's going to blame it on the fact that I fucked Jason in July of 2023. I don't think no it, one's going to think about anything else. Nobody's going to be thinking about the fact that we did this in 10 years, which when you're in the middle of the storm and everybody's freaking out on you every day, it's kind of easy to feel like, Oh, this is going to define my life going forward. Now that may be true to some extent, because this has been such a thing but I don't really think that it's that likely to follow us 10 years into the future I don't know my hopes is to uh, my hope is to be with Adam forever that is what I want and again last thing I want to say is this well not last thing but I, I think I asked this but wait so Lena which which sex was better because you haven't had it Adam's a, you and Adam sorry Jason was the first dick you had right? you know what let me say let me say something I find this very uncomfortable to talk about what? There's not many things I find uncomfortable, but I just find this uncomfortable to talk about. And the reason is, it's not because, I mean, I'm an adult. I know what sex is. Of course, I've lived a very varied life. I just feel like, I don't know. We have so many people watching us and we're just talking about dick and vagina. Don't you think this is below us? I don't know. We're all pretty intelligent people. We talk about the matrix and how they're trying to dumb us all down and trying to yeah. control all of our minds. And this base instinct talk, I find it very uncomfortable i don't find I, i'm not comfortable being on this stream if i was sitting with a woman next to me the last thing i would talk about is our personal life i just don't think it's the smart thing to do and i don't think that it is i don't have any interest in the personal sex life of any married couple and i don't want to hear about it and i don't want to talk about it and i just find it very uncomfortable i'm extremely uncomfortable in this situation that's the truth and i'm not saying that from a position of weakness i'm saying it from a position of strength i don't like talking about these things I don't like talking about women getting fucked. I don't like talking about what I do with women. I don't like talking about any of it. I think that what I do in the bedroom with a woman who I care about should be to a degree private. sacred. Private, yeah. And I think it should be completely private. Absolutely. And I don't want to hear about anyone else fucking. I want to make something clear to the stream. I've never watched. I don't watch porn. I've never bought an OnlyFans. I've never paid for sex. My relationship with sex is involves love. And I don't think it should happen outside of love. And I think that's the way that sex should operate. And I think that when you decide... And once again, I could be wrong. When you decide to keep sex exclusively for love, there's something beautiful and special about it. And if you decide not to do that, then you keep chasing a new high. And you can have threesomes and fuck a bunch of girls. And I'm not saying I haven't done it, but eventually you're constantly just chasing a new high and you end up just doing something weird. Whereas if I mean, you just say, I only have sex with girls I love, then it's always special and it's always pretty sacred. And you get to just enjoy it that way. And beautiful children are birthed and just life goes on. If uh, in maybe like the last five years of our relationship, I can really only think of maybe like one or two times that we've had sex with a girl off camera. For the most part, we are monogamous. Uh, we just 
fuck around on camera. And I think if anything, our realization is, is that the world is so extremely fascinated by a couple like us who are open-minded sexually because there's a lot of conversations about polyamorous relationships. And, you know, in, in our case, I do think it's kind of disingenuous for everybody to act like we're in this crazy poly relationship when we actually are monogamous uh, besides on camera. But, I mean, for us, it's really like a porn thing. You know, she shot this scene with this dude as much as she may have enjoyed it or not enjoyed it. It was a money decision. It was like, oh, this is going to be a big move for my career and for our family. We're going to be able to retire off of this money. So yeah. I, that, that was the reason for it. Not like, oh, I'm just dying. I have another dick in my mouth. I, I understand. And I'm not a saint. I'm not saying you're, saying you're trying to say I'm a saint. I'm not trying to talk from a position of authority. But I have perhaps maybe it's my fight career, which Sarone doesn't respect or maybe it's something else. But I think that you can achieve a lot of happiness in life through actually reducing your exposure to certain things. I'll give you an example. I'm not particularly a foodie, but I will only eat once a day. Sometimes I don't eat for two or three days at a time, and that's the reason I love a steak. So right now I have unlimited sexual options because I am the top G and I'm the most famous man on the planet, and thousands of women a week are constantly trying to throw themselves <laughs> at me. And the reason I reject them all is because I don't think I would enjoy sex as a whole if I slept with all these women. The reason I enjoy sex is because I say no to everybody and say no to everything. And by reducing my exposure to something, that's how I still find it interesting, and that's how I still enjoy it. So... I know what you're saying. I'm, I'm just talking from my personal experience. I I try very hard to not give in to any temptations and try to avoid them. And I'm not saying I'm a perfect person, but by doing that, I find satisfaction in the world. So if I feel like fucking, I quite often don't fuck. A, a corollary to that is that we were just on, uh, we were all over Italy and Spain and France on our honeymoon and we were eating in five-star restaurants every single day, the best food that's out there. And by the end of it, I didn't give a fuck at all about Correct. what I was eating. And now that I'm back home and I'm, uh, you know, eating on a pretty strict diet and exercising and everything like that, you could go get me a McDonald's fucking Big Mac and I'm going to be on cloud nine because it's just so much more potent than the stuff that I'm eating on a day to day basis. So I, I would say that in the sense that there are a lot of guys out there who think that the, the, the key to happiness is just sleeping with as many women as possible. From my perspective, I'm infinitely more happy just being in a nice, solid r relationship where I can really trust my partner as opposed to the way I was. Andrew, before I got into this relationship with her, I was in the streets. I saved you. I was bad. I was fucking like five, six, seven girls a week, new girls. It was disgusting. Doing cocaine, drinking to an absurd degree, popping Xanax, snorting perks. Fuck drugs. I was bad. Fuck drugs. Fuck drugs. I was drugs, man. Yeah, I was drinking lean like Aiden Ross. And now, you know, I'm much <laughs> happy. I'm just sitting here like, that's crazy. All right. Well, I agree, and, and I just want to say that before before you guys leave, I agree. I just want to say that I wish you absolutely the best. I wish the best for everybody on the planet, and I have nothing against you, and I'm glad that you are happy with your decision. I hope it works out fantastically for you, and I hope you stay together forever and you raise your children because that's a beautiful thing, and that's what the world needs more of. So I wish you the absolute best. I think a lot of people expected us to argue, and I don't feel that way about about you or your decisions and you seem like very nice people so i wish you the absolute best and lena i hope you had fun and i hope you enjoy your marriage <laughs> I, I don't know what else people expect me to say i'm sneeko 